Could you stop screaming? Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome back to Scooping Poop with Vivian and also Sprinkles. Sprinkles is my leopard gecko and she's a very good girl and I love her forever. So today we're going to be talking about the best beginner reptiles. I'll also be covering a couple of reptiles that are kept very commonly by beginners, but they might not be the best choice. But before we get into this video, can we just please address my hoodie? even has my channel name on it <laughs> so this hoodie along with the swatch was actually sent to me by ink snow flying and they are a company that specializes in reptile slash animal themed apparel such as t-shirts um hoodies watches and also things like jewelry they have an amazing artist so all of these designs are original this one is a watch with a leopard gecko on it and all of these things are actually extremely high quality so both of these things was sent to me, so I did not pay for them. However, all opinions are honest and completely my own. Honestly, I really, really like both of them. This video is not sponsored at all, and they're not paying me to say any of this stuff. But if you guys are looking for some reptile-themed apparel, such as clothes or jewelry or anything like that, I highly suggest you checking them out, and I'll have a link in my description. Not only do they have absolutely adorable designs and everything is super high quality, they actually also ship worldwide. So if you guys want, you can click the link in my description and you can get this watch and also this hoodie. So the hoodie you guys are getting will not say scooping poop on it because this is actually a customized design that the artist made for me, but you will get this adorable bearded dragon and it's just... So again, thank you so much Ink Snow Flying for sending me these things and let's get on with today's video. So when we talk about beginner reptiles, one of the first animals that come to mind are leopard geckos. So Sprinkles here is a leopard gecko and believe it or not, she's actually my very first reptile. Now there are a lot of reasons why people recommend leopard geckos as beginner reptiles and I agree with these reasons and so that's why I think that leopard geckos can actually be a really good starter pet. The first thing I want to address is their size. Sprinkles here is completely maxed out. She probably will not get any bigger. Some males might get a little bit bigger and depending on the bloodline, you can get super giant leopard geckos that will essentially grow super giant, I mean. But the majority of leopard geckos will stay around this size, meaning that their terrarium does not have to be very large at all. So some people say that the minimum for leopard geckos is 10 gallons, but I personally think that's a little bit too small. I think that that's acceptable for a juvenile leopard gecko, but in the future, if you can upgrade, I highly suggest a 20 gallon long. This way, they can temperature regulate a lot easier and you can give them plenty of enrichment and things they can hide in. Their diet is also relatively simple. They are completely insectivores, meaning that they will only eat insects. However, that does mean you have to care for live food such as crickets, dubia roaches, and superworms. And no, you cannot just feed them freeze-dried insects. That does not count. I actually have a video up here that will tell you about why you should feed live, healthy insects. Now, leopard geckos are also highly recommended because they are very tolerant. And what I mean by tolerant is that right here, Sprinkles is doing just fine. She's holding on like a happy little girl. Besides having tiny teeth, they also have tiny little hands, meaning they have tiny little claws. So when they run all over you, you will not be covered in scratches. You can feel their claws on your skin, but it's definitely nothing like rats. Like, if you're a rat owner out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But leopard geckos will not leave you in paper cuts when they run across your hands. They are relatively good boys. Now, another reason why I would recommend leopard geckos is that you do not have to worry a lot about UVB lighting. Now, here's where all the controversy comes in. One of the first videos I made, which is actually really embarrassing to think about, is a video called Five Reasons Why You Don't Want a Leopard Gecko. And in that video, I simply covered that there's so much controversy surrounding UVB light, it can be really confusing to a beginner. But based off of my research, I think the conclusion has come to leopard geckos can survive without UVB lighting as long as they're given D3 supplementation. Depending on the gecko, sometimes a more ideal situation will be giving them a low output UVB light that on for a couple of hours during dawn and dusk with occasional D3 supplementation. 
Okay, so that was probably really confusing if you know nothing about reptiles. I promise in the future I will make an entire video talking about UVB and leopard geckos because trust me, it is loaded with controversy. If you go onto any reptile forum, you'll end up with people screaming at you or you screaming at other people. It's just, it's just the way it is. <laughs> But for sprinkles, I prefer the second method where I provide a small amount of UVB light a lot as along with some D3 supplementation. But just note that they are not like bitter dragons who definitely, definitely need UVB light or else they'll die. They are crepuscular, meaning that they are most active at dawn and dusk, meaning that in the wild, their natural sunlight exposure isn't going to be super duper high, meaning that in captivity, they can probably get away with not having a artificial UVB light. Again, super controversial, do your own research, but just understand that it is not something that's super duper crucial. Sprinkles are good girl. Yeah. Aw, baby. These are some of the pros I wanted to mention about leopard geckos being good beginner pets. However, with all of these animals that I'll feature today, definitely do your own independent research so they can make sure you're making the correct decision. But these are just some ideas so you can make your researching life easier. Sprinkles has a twin. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> So besides leopard geckos, another reptile that is oftentimes brought up are crested geckos. So I also have a crested gecko named Honeybee, but I will not be taking them out because they are nocturnal and I'm pretty sure if I took Honeybee out, they would jump. They, they have no depth perception at this point, they'll just jump off of anything. But along with leopard geckos, crested geckos are oftentimes brought up when talking about beginner reptiles and for a pretty good reason as well. For one, crested geckos also stay relatively small. With their tail, they can grow max out around 10 inches approximately, so they're around the same size as a leopard gecko. And interestingly enough, they actually require the same recommended tank size, just a little bit differently. So I said that I think leopard geckos should live in a 20 gallon long. However, for a crested gecko, they can live in a 20 gallon long, but not on its side, but rather vertically. <laughs> The reason why is because crested geckos are arboreal creatures. Arboreal means that they'll spend time off the ground and they'll be living in trees and bushes or anything that's more elevated. Contrary to popular belief, crested geckos in the wild, they do not live at the very top peaks of trees. They are not 20 feet above ground. Instead, they stay relatively lower to the ground, meaning that something like a 30 inch terrarium that's like tilted upwards is a pretty freaking good size. Besides that, a lot of people like exoterra terrariums because they have front opening doors and there are many sizes as well. But the typical minimum required for them would be the 18 by 18 by 24, which is a lot more expensive than a 20 gallon long. But if you prefer the opening doors and a slightly bigger space for your leopard gecko, for your crested gecko, then I say go for it. Now, crested geckos are also great pets because they do not require UVB lighting. Crested geckos are completely nocturnal, meaning that they're only awake at night, so naturally, their sunlight exposure is pretty much none. Instead, they do need D3 supplementation, but luckily for you, all of this is found in prepackaged food. So one of the big bonuses of having a crested gecko is how easy their diet is. The majority of crested geckos live off of prepackaged food, um, such as meal replacement powders. Some examples include Rapashi and also Pangea. Those tend to be the most popular brands, and for good reason. They're extremely high quality, and they're supplemented perfectly, so you can't overdose anything. However, there is a misconception about crested geckos. Many people think, well, because they are eating the meal supplement replacement powder that's mostly fruit-based and vegetation-based, that means that they do not require live insects. But the actual truth is they do much better when they are given occasional live insects, simply because in the wild, they actually will eat insects almost as regularly as they eat fruit. The meal replacement powders aren't just dried up fruit. They have other elements in there as well, meaning that they can actually live off of it pretty well. However, in order to add some extra enrichment and to make a diet more complete, I highly, highly recommend throwing in some feeder insects into the mix. Now, again, this is where a little bit of controversy comes in, as some people say their crested geckos have lived their entire life not eating one live insect and they've been fine. But I always think that if we keep an animal in captivity, we should always do our best to provide what they will eat in the wild. And one thing they eat 
are insects. And I always believe that a varied diet is always the key. So let me give you some examples of things they can eat. They can eat soft body worms such as hornworms and silkworms as long as it's small enough. They can also eat things like dubia roaches, crickets, and also eat the occasional waxworm. Crested geckos, unlike leopard geckos, usually do not require any supplemental heating. Leopard geckos do require an under tank heat mat in order to give them proper belly heat. However, crested geckos survive pretty well at room temperature, surprisingly. In fact, if your house gets too hot, that's where the issue actually comes in. So you don't worry about extra heating, but do worry about humidity. Crested geckos require humidity at around 70% for most of the day and also a dry down period. So what you should do is that before you go to bed at night, just open up their cage and spray it down very, very well with a misting water bottle. This way they can have high humidity during the night and as the day goes on the next day, they'll have a dry down period. As long as the humidity does not dip down below 50%, you should be okay. Overall, I also highly recommend crested geckos as a beginner reptile because they're not only adorable, but they're relatively easy and one of the most simple reptile species you can keep in my opinion. And of course, we cannot forget the infamous bearded dragon. <laughs> Baby. Oh, oh my god, <laughs> baby. <laughs> so most of you guys already know this here is Cactus and he is my bearded dragon. So bearded dragons are oftentimes the one of the most recommended beginner reptiles. However, I politely disagree. <laughs> Keep in mind that I am by no means a reptile expert. <laughs> I mean, look at me. But just based off of the experience I've had with cactus, I can definitely tell that a beginner beginner will not have the most fun with a bearded dragon. This does not apply to everyone, of course, because everybody has different care abilities slash budget slash ambition or passion. But bearded dragons aren't always the best beginner reptile and I will rank them more intermediate simply because of these few factors. One thing is their size. So cactus here is already pretty big, I say, but some males can get even bigger than him. Some can reach up to two feet long. But regardless of their size, they also need a big terrarium. So the typical minimum recommended for a bearded dragon is a 40 gallon breeder. However, this is quite small. And for most bearded dragons, I recommend as a ideal size, I'd say a 75 gallon and up. Cactus currently lives in a 120 gallon tank and he uses every single inch of that tank. So I can definitely imagine that if you have a bearded dragon, a 40 gallon breeder might be suitable, but if you want to, definitely try to upgrade. Bearded dragons also have a diet that's a little bit more complex. They're omnivores, meaning that they eat both plant matter and also animal matter, meaning that not only do you have to feed them live insects, but you also have to provide them with daily salads. I already have a lot of bearded dragon care videos that I will link down in the description so that you can check them out. Uh. Bearded dragons also need a basking light, something that was not mentioned with the previous other two reptiles. A basking light basically will provide plenty of warmth for your bearded dragon. Bearded dragons, unlike leopard geckos, don't necessarily absorb heat through their bellies, but instead they like to absorb it like this. <laughs> So in the wild, they do something called basking, which is when they basically lie there like an idiot and take up all the sunlight and warmth. So you'll need a basking light that can provide enough warmth for a bearded dragon, and that basking light has to be pretty hot. Besides that, you need a UVB light and a proper one. Again, I will have videos talking about this, but it is so crucial and important that you get a proper UVB light because without it, your bearded dragon will die a horrible death and I will blame it on you. However, bearded dragons, unlike other intermediate to advanced lizards, are incredibly docile and actually quite friendly. He is such a good boy, I think he might be a dog trapped in a lizard's body. As you can see, he is not afraid of anything and he's just, he's so chill and happy. Just good boy, right? Good boy. Good boy too. And of course, all bearded dragons will have different personalities. Not all of them will be this calm, especially not when they are babies. Now, I did not have the pleasure of caring for Cactus when he was a baby because he was actually a rescue. However, if you do choose to get a bearded dragon as a baby, I highly do not recommend it. 
So adult bearded dragons are a little bit easier than baby bearded dragons. In fact, I think babies is what pushes them over to the more intermediate side because babies have to be fed multiple times a day and we're talking about like 60 to 100 crickets a day or sometimes even more. They have extremely high metabolisms, they're a little bit harder to tame, and they definitely require different temperatures. And babies are tiny when you first get them, meaning that you'll eventually have to upgrade tank size and all of that. However, if you do want to care for one as a baby, I think that would be wonderful because it's like, it's like a grow your own dinosaur. You'll get so big. Again, like I said, I have plenty of other bearded dragon type isk videos, so you can definitely go check this out. If you have questions, leave them down below. So you're probably wondering, well, now that we've talked about the three most common beginner reptiles slash, li slash lizards, which one do I recommend? So it really depends on what you are looking for based on the amount of enrich enrichment you want to have or simply based off of easy care. However, in my personal recommendation, I say that out of these three, in my opinion, the easiest one to care for are probably crested geckos. Now, although some people might disagree saying that leopard geckos come in as a close second, that's quite true. But in my opinion, caring for my leopard gecko is actually a bit more difficult than caring for my crested gecko just because of maybe personal preference. I find that crested geckos are a little bit more like low maintenance. So if you guys like this video, definitely let me know. And again, a huge thank you to the beautiful artist that sent me this wonderful PR, this lovely watch, and again, this lovely hoodie. If you guys want to check them out, I have a link in my description. And if you buy something from that link, it can actually help out me as well as Cactus. So I definitely thank all of you guys for watching today's video. I appreciate all of you so, so much. And also in the comments, tell me what you think is the best beginner reptile. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Oh my god, <laughs> baby. <laughs>